Well, hi, everybody. I'm AJ. We'll be glad to have you all with us again for another product training call Monday night. And uh, this is going to be a special call tonight uh, because tonight we are addressing some of the most frequently asked questions that people have as far as, you know, how the products work. What about this? What about that? So let me get started with a few things just so you know, uh, because we will have it to where you can uh, post in the chat section there. If you want to send us some questions, you can do that. And we will address as many as we can that fall into the guidelines. Here's the guidelines. We're not going to really address anything that is in a specific diagnosis tonight because everyone's diagnosis is different and that has to be handled on an individual basis many, many times. And the best way is to just email Dr. Templeman directly and you can do that at Dr. Templeman at m.network and uh, that will get to his email address. So his email again is Dr. Templeman at m.network and you can address those specific diagnosis if you have a specific situation that you're wondering about. As far as general questions, ask away. We're going to get going. We've got a list of questions. We're going to try and cover these and I'm going to try and keep Dr. Templeman as brief as I can on some of these because I know he would love to take one of these questions and talk for a half hour on each one. So we're going to try not to do that. <laughs> Here's how we're going to do it. Each question we're going to answer in two different ways. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give you an answer from the field. And then Dr. Templeman's going to give you the correct answer. <laughs> or he's going to give you the answer that's more from the doctor's perspective. So we're going to go ahead and let's get started. Dr. Templeman, first off, thank you so much for being on the call. For those that don't know, Dr. Templeman, he is the head of M Network's Medical and Scientific Advisory Board. And uh, he is the man who, uh, when it comes to our products and what goes in and the technology around it, he's the one who makes sure that everything is up on me, AJ. at the this. highest quality possible. Uh, did, were you saying something, did I enter, did you? Oh, I, you froze up on me for a bit there, but that's all right. I oh. know what you're <laughs> so, so Dr. Tillman, he is almost authority in the world on the mangosteen fruit and also one of the top people ever on all the botanicals and nutrients, uh, things that are out there as far as supplementation. So there's no one better that could answer the questions as far as how the products work, what's going on with them, what to do about certain situations than Dr. Frederick J. Templeman. And so we are so glad to have him here with us. Dr. Templeman, thank you for being here every week. Uh, let's get started off. First question, if supplements help us to avoid certain illnesses and diseases, why can't we say that? It is true, isn't it? Now, I'm gonna let you go directly there because of course, I wanna, I wanna just announce it from the world every time I hear something new, it's like, yeah, I want to tell someone about that disease and how it helps that and how it helps that. But obviously, that's straight to the doctor on that one. Yeah, it's, and it's a question of law. The supplement industry is regulated through a, an act of Congress, which is called the Duche Act from 1995. So it's really quite a, an old piece of legislation, but it is relatively restrictive in what it will allow you to make as what it calls claims. Now, claims are things like this. If you use this, it will help with diabetes. If you use this, it will help you with migraine headaches. If you use this, you can avoid irritable bowel syndrome. Those are claims, they're explicit claims. And those are the things that the legislation does not let us do without the same kind of evidence that is necessary for a pharmaceutical company to say, if you take ibuprofen, it will help with your headaches. They, they have been able to pay in the neighborhood, not for ibuprofen, but for drugs today, about $1.2 billion to develop the kind of evidence that will allow them to say that. Well, that kind of money just doesn't exist in the supplement industry. Supplement companies do not do that kind of research. We work with other lower grades of research, which are valid and good, but we cannot make a connection between treating, uh, covering, doing anything with diseases that are specifically named. Now, 
if you ask me, Dr. Templeman, my personal opinion, uh, do, to, uh, do supplements when they are taken appropriately in the right dose for uh, certain illnesses, will they make a difference? The answer is absolutely. I have seen it many, many, many times. But Dr. Templeman saying that he has seen it many times does not rise the evidence, does not raise the evidence to the level that is required by law for you to say this supplement will do this or will do that in your body. We don't know. So what we can do is that we can give our own personal testimony. You can't give the testimony of your sister or your brother uh, or anyone else, but you certainly are protected by the First Amendment to give anything that you say that you believe to be true, and you can do that. So if you have diabetes and you've used a supplement, you're perfectly uh, uh, entitled to say, I am a diabetic, this was my hemoglobin A1C before I started to watch my diet more effectively and to use the uh, particular supplement. And my hemoglobin A1C came down three points. So that's, that's perfectly all right, because that's you expressing what happened to you. But you can't say it for anybody else, nor can you generalize and say, therefore, using this particular supplement is going to help diabetes or drop your hemoglobin A1C. Those things you cannot say. Now, just because you can't say them doesn't mean that it may not be true or that there may not be some evidence that it is true. It's just that the evidence that is there is primarily in the form of anecdotal report, which is class D evidence, as opposed to class A medical evidence, which would be a randomized controlled double blind trial that costs millions of dollars. So that's why we don't talk about it's a question of law. You can talk about your own individual experience but you cannot extrapolate that experience to everyone else. And so probably the best thing that you can do is to say, it worked for me. Why don't you try it and see what it does for you? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So we're going to move on. The next question, we're going to dig right in here. What kind of sweeteners are used on the sticks? I've had several questions about this. People ask that uh, they know that there has been some pure cane sugar that used, is used in one of them and sucralose that's used in one of them. Why is that? And I'll tell you real quick, here's the thing. First off, the amounts that's used, that we use in our products is so low that it is just barely there for a flavor, but the amount is so low that you won't get any negative effects from it. You would have to have drink like 128 sticks a day to have a negative effect from the sucralose or the cream cane sugar, whatever it is that you think might be bad for you. Now, Dr. Telepelman, what's the real answer? Because that's the answer that I, that I know. Well, that, that, that's a pretty good answer, AJ, because the truth of the matter is that while there are postulated evils, if you wish, to sugar substitutes, the fact is that for some of them, such as saccharin, there's very good evidence that you shouldn't be using saccharin. But there is not real good evidence for sucralose. Sucralose is 600 times stronger than sugar, but it is derived from sugar. Some people get all upset about the way it is derived from sugar, and because it comes into contact with certain things that they believe are absolute poisons, they say, therefore, you cannot use it. There are some studies out there. The, the actual studies are not particularly impressive in terms of what they tried to prove and the way they tried to prove it. But if you go onto the internet and look up sucralose, you can be frightened to death. But then if you go onto the internet and you look up Republicans, you can be frightened to death. Or if you go on the internet and look up Mormons, you can be frightened to death. And the fact is that it's largely a matter of opinion. And if we were to use sugar, which is used primarily to make something taste good and to mask the taste of certain elements that would have to be put in a capsule otherwise, we would have to use huge amounts of sugar. And so we don't. In those products where we don't have a great deal of masking to do, such as the core, we use just enough real unrefined cane sugar. So very close 
to the molasses aspect, which is really what gets squeezed out of cane when you are uh, starting to boil it and it's getting uh, rendered down. It's very close to the source. It is not refined, highly refined sugar, such as white sugar. And we're using very, very small amounts so that it's not a diabetic challenge. A couple of grams of sugar is something that a diabetic does not need to worry about, doesn't need to pull their hair out about it. They simply need to count it in the calories that they are eating in the carbohydrate category, which is what they need to look at. Most diabetics do not count their calories. And I've seen many diabetics take something that has a lot more sugar or other things that they shouldn't be taking, carbohydrates, and wolf it down because it tastes good. We use the sucralose because we don't want to use large amounts of sugar. And we would have to use large amounts of sugar in certain of the products. In others, we wouldn't. And so we do use sugar in that one product. We have something called stevia, which in North America, everybody loves stevia. They think it's wonderful. Um, just like Republicans are not really loved in New York City, Stevia is not loved in Europe. As a matter of fact, there's a law over there saying you can't bring it over. The only kind of sugar substitute which is permitted in the EU is sucralose. And so it really becomes a question of belief, uh, of scary tactics on the internet, not particularly well buttressed with evidence, and uh, a number of very, very strong opinions. Opinions do not have to be true. They just have to be honest. And in the case of the opinion on sucralose, I would say this. If you want to spend all of your time reading labels, and I think you should spend some of your time reading labels, you would be more frightened by most of the stuff that's in your shopping cart in the form of processed foods with the additives that are in there than you should be concerned about less than a gram of sucralose much less than a gram. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, the next question. What's the maximum amount of stick you can take in a day? I would answer that by saying 72 is probably the maximum number of sticks you should take in a day. You could, some people may be able to do 73 or 74, but I wouldn't push much past 72. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't know. Now, truthfully honest, though, is Hey, I've had days where I've done, I'll be honest, I've had 12 to 15 sticks in a day, you know, and that's, that's been some days that's been very normal. And I know a lot of other people. I know Joe Melly. He's, he's another one that he can keep up with me on the number of sticks per day there. Dr. Templeman, I've never had any problems. I've never seen or heard of any problems like that. What about you? Well, there are a couple of products that we do have, such as the trim and the burn, where there is a prescribed dosage and you should not exceed that dosage. In fact, uh, people with certain medical conditions need to be a little bit more informed even before they use that. But for the vast number of products that we have on the market, there isn't any adverse effect that you will feel if you use several of them in a day, even go. You're not going to hurt yourself. The only possible thing that might give somebody a question in go is the amount of caffeine that is in it, which is no more than a, a strong cup of coffee. So I guess you could ask the question, how much coffee do you drink in a day? Well, if you want to sleep at night, you're probably not going to drink seven or eight. But if you're like Richard O'Brien, you may drink four or five quite easily. So there's nothing that's really dangerous. The recommended dosage would be what a reasonable person would take to have an effect. But some people, their mechanism in their body is a little bit different than their neighbors and they may require more or they may require less. The product that we have out there right now that has the greatest variation in dose is the M3Z product for sleep or anxiety. Some people take very small amounts, up to three it sprays a night. Others will use it several times a day, a few hours apart, and will not have any adverse effects and will get the anxiolytic effect that they're looking for with anxiety and stress. 
So let's talk about the products individually. So Soul, all right? Soul, I recommend, depending on your marital relationship, you may want to have a lot of Soul now. That's sure. really good for, for your marriage. Soul will help cure marriage problems. And that's a good one to have a lot of you. But there's nothing wrong with having a lot of Soul, right? Nothing at all. All right. So the go, you already addressed that. Hey, watch your caffeine. Depending on how much caffeine you can take a day, you need that extra energy. Go for it. You know, if you're someone like John Zenas, I think that guy drinks a whole box of go in every single day. But, you know, that's why he gets so much done. All right. The smart. I probably need to take a box of smart every day. I don't know. Can I handle that now? Any, any reason it gets that? No, there would be no reason against it. Now, there is a very, very strong product in there. And if someone were going to use five or ten sticks of smart a day uh, and they happen to be on some kind of antidepressant medication i would suggest caution or discussing it with their doctor but the product that is powerful and that is in the smart is not there in such a quantity that it's likely to cause a reaction with drugs being taken at three four even five a day above that i would say you need to exercise caution but I've never seen a single reaction being reported to me from any of the products, by the way, used in the recommended doses. Okay, now what about the burn and trim? That's really the only ones that I would think would be uh, specific. And I've, I've had people say to me, why is it that uh, I've been trying to lose weight and I've been using both the burn and the trim and they help me, but I have real problems getting my weight down. Whereas somebody that I sponsored into the business that didn't know anything about the burn and the trim, they started taking that and they're dropping a pound a day. What's going on, Dr. Templeman? And I would say it's your water. <laughs> no, uh, it's the individual makeup of your body. We have something in medicine that we call personalized medicine. And for example, the Cancer Centers of America, which happened to be the organization in North America, with the best uh, record for treating advanced cancers, they are advertising the fact that they can personalize the treatment that you may receive at their hands by doing genetic testing. And we're getting so good at the genetic testing now that it's being used in quite a few situations where someone is tested and found to be genetically incompatible unable to use a particular medication. Hence, if you gave them all kinds of it, it wouldn't make any good difference in their situation and it might make some differences. So being close to a personal experience is all that I can say to someone who is to me, look, I've been trying to lose weight. I'm taking the same amount as my neighbor, but my neighbor's losing weight. And I'm losing weight at a third of the speed with which she is losing weight. It's just an individual difference. And there will be one third of people who try a particular product and will never have a favorable response. But there are 10% of people who are going to be using a product and they'll have a much stronger response, either one way or another, than everybody else. So we can't nail it down to exact percentages and we can't predict what will happen in any individual case, which is why the dosage recommended is a dosage that is recommended for the average person and would work for the greatest number. But we cannot in advance tell you what will happen. Only you and your personal experience can ascertain what the effect of a particular supplement will be with you. And that is definitely the case with burn and with trim. For example, I talked to a lady the other, well, not the other day, but a couple of weeks ago about the trim. And she'd been introduced to it by a friend and she was losing a pound a day at doing really nothing more than mild caloric restriction. She really wasn't exercising a great deal. And yet she was losing at that rate. Whereas I've had other people say to me, man, I have to put a, a couple of trim in every day with my burn to be able to keep my appetite down. Blame your parents. Uh, it, it's uh, something that happened genetically with you and you're different than everybody else. We're all 
the same in many ways. We have one head, two arms, two feet, but beyond that, there are a lot of differences that separate us, and metabolically, these differences are immense. Exactly, and the recommended in most of the cases with most of our products is one to two sticks of uh, you know the products per day. You're going to see most results that you're looking for. And again, like Dr. Tippleman said, you know, figure out what it is the right number for you, and you're going to be able to tell based on what your body does. So but, take, it, take them all with food. Now there are some that you can take without food and have effect, such as the Soul and the uh, Smart. But the majority of them are better uh, absorbed and utilized by the body when they go in with some food in the gut. All right. So, and you don't have to take it with food, but you're going to get better results if you do take it with food. So, uh, Dr. Tippin, the next question is: What about age limits? Can I give this? Can I give sticks to my three-year-old or what age should they be before taking them? And the same question for the sleep spray. I'll just answer it for most of them. Uh, with the exception of the trim and burn, the answer that I typically tell people is you are the parent and you know what your kids can and can't do and stuff. But the thing is, is these products are generally safe and we're seeing people that are, are having good results with young children. Now, the official answer the official answer is that they've been tested in adults only. And so therefore you can't make recommendations for their usage outside of the testing. When we do our testing for these products, and it isn't randomized controlled double blind testing, but we have an actual group of 35 that we introduce every product to. And when they, that 35 has rendered their uh, response to us on their effect with the product, if it is overwhelmingly effective, we don't go with something that's minorly effective in that group of people. But if it's overwhelmingly effective, we then extend that to more than 100 volunteers and ask them to use it. But they are, by definition, adults. And they are not, by definition, pregnant women or nursing women or children. Those are categories that are excluded simply because they make up a very small population of the group that's there. And with children, nobody really knows what the effect will be until they examine it. Now, are there things in there in any of those products other than, and I think once again, it's the caffeine when you're looking at the burn. But when you look at these products, generally speaking, you're looking at something that would be nox noxious in children. And that's not likely to be anything except high doses of caffeine. Now, I don't know whether I would recommend for young children, and by young children, I mean under the age of seven, any of the smart or sold products, but I don't think that you would harm them by doing so. The only thing I'm saying is, don't just treat them to get their water better. There needs to be an indication for which you're using it to hopefully get a response, a risk ratio benefit that favors using it in the child. For children who are under two years of age, I would say I wouldn't use any of the products because those children are really infants. And if someone has an infant with a problem that they're concerned about, they can call me directly. We can discuss the case specifically and I can give them a more refined answer. But generally speaking, I would not use this under any circumstances in children that are two years of age or less. Okay? All right, and, and I'll go ahead and I will speak because I can say it for my own direct family as the parent or grandparent here is uh, my daughter. Uh, well, I'm trying to figure out whether I can say this about that my daughter took it while she was pregnant, took the core and uh, had good response and uh, have heard of people uh, with uh, small and very, very uh, young children that the core has been very effective uh, in uh, helping my grandchildren with uh, colds and so forth. So, all yeah, right, get on that because I know that's dangerous. So let me let me say something more about pregnant and nursing women. I get lots of questions. Should I be? And generally speaking, I will call them and ask them about prior pregnancies. Is this your first pregnancy? What has your health been like in your life? And assess the overall risk because pregnancy is a risky state. 
And the fact of the matter is that some pregnancies, enough of them, uh, come out with some modified effect. In other words, they don't, they don't work out well in every case that the mother is going to beat herself up incredibly. And that would perhaps even trigger something called postpartum depression, one of the nastiest kinds of depression to try and deal with. If she's done something or anything that was new or different during her pregnancy and something happens to the baby and it doesn't come out to be perfect, she will really take herself to task. And therefore I tell her, that's a risk and that's a benefit. You have to decide. I know of nothing in there that I would say to you, a pregnant mother should not use, but you have to decide what your specific response would be if something didn't come out perfectly in the pregnancy. Are you going to beat yourself up and get at risk for depression? Absolutely. All right, so next subject here. And uh, I had these questions come in, so I'm gonna put them all together here. They all kind of go together. One uh, person says, I have a friend who loves to just pour the sticks directly in his mouth like dry, pop ro like dry like pop rocks or something. Is this dangerous? Another one says, does the amount of water added to the sticks change the effect of this? And the other uh, question is, my husband takes a gallon of water to work with him every day and only puts one pour and one go in his gallon jug. Is he wasting his sticks by putting it in so much water? So we got extremes here, tons of water, to just taking it and no putting water. powder in your mouth. Is it, is either one of those bad? Does it affect the effectiveness either way? No, the dosage that you get is what is in the package. And whether you disperse that among a lot of water clusters or whether you simply take it dry in your mouth and have to drink something to get it down, doesn't make a difference as to how much gets in your body or really to how rapidly it's going to be absorbed. So the water quantity is not an absolute. We were, I was talking with someone the other day about an aged parent who really can't take a lot of liquids. And so they were putting it in Jello and they were putting it in yogurt as a flavoring in natural yogurt, all of the sticks. And they were working very, very well. What you're getting is something that taken with water is going to help you keep enough water in your body, which is the most quantitatively the most important element in your body. And qualitatively, you'll be taking something to help a condition or to, new, uh, to perhaps, uh, I've got the French word in my mind there, which, to perhaps combler, to, to make up for a deficiency in your diet that you would like to make certain your body has enough of the right stuff to do everything that you're requesting of it effectively. Awesome. All right. So next question. Are our products safe to take with medicines? The, the big broad answer is yes. And the big broad answer is because the amounts that we are going to be using are not likely going to respond to, not going to be problematic for the, uh, even the defined uh, interactions that could occur with medicines. For example, Ginkgo biloba, which is in a certain quality in one of our products, has been tied to drug-food interactions. However, mangosteen has also been theoretically tied to some food interactions. But in 15 years of watching people take tremendous amounts of mangosteen, I never once, as the officer for a company that sold literally thousands and thousands and thousands of doses every day, never once had to make a report about any adverse reaction over 15 years. That's a pretty impressive timeline in terms of being able to say, not likely to make any difference at all. Now, even when there is an interaction, it probably is not anything that is going to be serious or dangerous and I can address that if someone really has questions regarding specific drugs. I can go and look on a database and tell you if there's going to be a reaction, even probably or theoretically, or what is the risk. I can help you with those kinds of decisions. Or you can do the same thing with your doctor. The difficulty in doing it with a doctor who doesn't understand supplements 
is that they may just feel that it's easier to say, no, don't do it, because they know they're on the safe side by doing that. They need to understand quite a bit about supplements in order to be able to say, certainly, go ahead. All right. All right. A whole different subject. We're going to go into packaging for a minute. So why is there so much room in the packets? Shouldn't they be filled all the way up? They certainly could be. Uh, in fact, I worked for a company for many years that did fill the packets up. And if you look at the other packets that are on the marketplace at the present time from companies who are doing very well, you'll see that they have two to three times the amount that we have in ours. And the difference is simple, fillers. A big pack may be impressive. And I can certainly understand someone saying, hey, I paid a buck 50 for this. And when I rip it open, all I got is a little bit in the bottom of the thing. But I'll tell you, if you bought one of the other products and you actually separated the things which are there to make the package big and those that are there to do the actual work, you're not going to see a striking difference between the two. We don't put fillers in because even though they are considered to be inert, and we try to restrict, I mean, we, we have to use some flow agents and things that are necessary to have them flow in the machine, but we try and use things that are absolutely benevolent, and we don't put anything in there which is there for bulk only, because those things sometimes are not good, and we don't do it. All right. Uh, next question is, uh, do we have any pro sports teams using any of our products? I'm working with pro and semi-pro sports teams right now. To my knowledge, the answer is we don't, but we should because they should be taking our products because it would be so much better and then we would know who to bet on would win. Well, the, when, when you think sports teams, you immediately think rehydration products. And when you're thinking about our company, you think about a hydration company, but we aren't a hydration company as far as our products are concerned in the same category as Gatorade or Powerade, uh, which by the way are owned by Pepsi and Coke. So you really have the big players in there and they spend billions of dollars advertising the fact that if you are a sports person, you got to be guzzling our stuff or you cannot perform at top rates. The absolute truth is that short of being a professional athlete, you do not require any carbohydrate or, for example, sugar uh, to be used for energy, nor do you require uh, electrolytes to be used to prevent things such as cramping, et cetera. Now, when you address the issue of a rehydration drink, such as Gatorade, Powerade, you realize that the infinitely small amount of professional athletes that use those things, who are, quite frankly, the only ones that would benefit from it, are certainly not the mass market that they are selling to. And when you give people who don't need it electrolytes, such as sodium, which is the commonest element that is in this, or potassium, or if you give them sugar, you're not doing them any favors at all. They don't require that for the kind of exercise that they do. The other day I went to my grandson's soccer game. Uh, they, they had one referee Essentially, it was the coach from the other side who was cheering people on when, when his team scored and when the other team scored. And they were having trouble even going in the right direction. And they played for a whole lot less than an hour. And some people were giving them Gatorade as they were out there sweating to their kneecaps from their, from their um, armpits. Not not going to be of any benefit to them at all and they certainly don't need the sugar and they certainly don't need the salt and they certainly don't need the potassium they get enough of that from their normal intake of food during the day so no i know of no professional athlete team that is using it but i'll tell you i would strongly recommend 
to any professional team that they be using the core because the core is a wonderful recovery product and is going to help with the protein restoration into muscle uh, that takes place in the night following the intake of it. It really is a good product because when you exert yourself to the levels of professional athletes, you drive down your effectiveness of your immune system and you become prone to all kinds of intercurrent respiratory tract infections and other problems that if you were taking something to support your immune system, you wouldn't be at risk for that. So are there good reasons for professional athletes to use it? Yes. Will we ever produce a hydration product that is gonna compete with Gatorade and, and Powerade? Absolutely not, because the majority of times that you see a bottle of that stuff at someone's lips, they're harming themselves. Absolutely, absolutely. A lot of people are are getting results and seeing things, posting different things about using our products with their animals. And uh, I can tell you from experience, my dog needs to take a lot of smart. And I hope that that would really help. Is there anything wrong with giving the pets our products? I've got the world's stupidest Great Dane. Uh, if, I mean, she is so dumb, it's amazing she can find the door. But she's beautiful. And, and my wife likes to have people, or not people, but animals and presences around her that don't challenge her. And this one doesn't challenge anybody. So she's beautiful and uh, just as dumb as a rock. When it thunders or lightnings or on the 4th of July, she's going to have diarrhea. It is just incredible. <laughs> I spray the sleep spray into her mouth and it allows her to act like a normal dog. Now, I'm not certain that all of the things that we use can be used in animals, but I will tell you this. There are none of the terrible things, such as grape and chocolate, that you're not supposed to give dogs that you couldn't give to, to your animals. And I don't think you'd be harming them in any way, and only experimentation will tell you whether you're going to make an event, uh, a, a beneficial effect, or you're going to have a beneficial effect. All right. So... Yeah, my, my simple answer is, yes, give it to your animals. They can take it. Give it to that parakeet. Give it to my stupid dog that I love. But dang, she's stupid. Uh, what's the difference, Dr. Templeman, between we see monster drinks and these other power, these other uh, stupid, you know, drinks out there that are supposed to help you with energy, and they've got all this caffeine in it, but then we say ours is so much more natural, but yet ours has caffeine. Isn't that yeah, bad? Yeah, yeah. It has a little bit over 200 milligrams of caffeine, but it's in four different forms. It comes in the form of caffeine allied with elements from the plant world. So it is not simply extracted as pure caffeine out of green teas. It is a green tea extract. It is not simply caffeine extracted from guana. It is a precursor of caffeine contained in the plant guarana. It is not yerba mate extract with only caffeine coming out. It's yerba mate. So you get a fair amount of products, three of them, that can, contain caffeine that the body looks at and reacts to as if it were a food. And well, how does that, that work? Well, the body hates drugs. It really, really hates anything that it doesn't find in food. And it will remove it as rapidly as it can, ergo the spike and the crash. And if you add sugar to it, the spike and the crash. And is that good for an unscrupulous company to encourage spike and crash? Yes, because when you crash, you want another spike. And so you go out and take another one of those products. But the fact of the matter is there's too much of what the body can use for energy in there, and it's in a form that is incompatible with good health. And hydrous caffeine, which is the synthetic caffeine that is out there, is not good for your body. And unfortunately, that's what you're going to get in these products. All right. So, Dr. Tempen, the uh, some people are asking about the soul and the M3Z. Uh, let's attack the, uh, let's go with the M3Z for a moment here. And uh, if the M3Z is a sleep aid, why are so many people saying that they're taking it during the daytime? Well, the M33, M3Z is a sleep aid for most people. 
for other people like me, it happens to be a catalyst to cause me to have some of the most distressing dreams that I've ever had. And these dreams aren't nightmares. It's just me kind of being in a, wrong, in a round room without a door trying to get out. So I can literally uh, go nuts in some of these dreams out of frustration. So much so that I will scream out in my head, this is just a dream, you idiot. And sometimes that stops it. But in the daytime when I use it, it really does help me take the top off my anxiety. And I don't have any effect such as putting me to sleep or making me less alert. If I did, I'd take the core with it. Not the core with it, but the soul with it, which is a, a mood modifier, but it lifts. All right. So real quick here, because we're running out of time. Uh, we've had some people asking some dosage questions. Everything from uh, dosage for their cat or the core uh, to uh, the M3Z, how many sprays for uh, the three-year-old um, and uh, how much can I give uh, of a core to a, a four or five-year-old? Okay. Uh, when you're looking at little people, you start low and you go slow. So you experiment starting at something as little as a single spray. Do you notice a difference with a single spray? Is the difference good or is the difference bad? If you're looking to relieve some kind of symptom or observable behavior, you get a baseline by scoring it on an analog scale of one to five over a period of about a week first before you start it. So you can know what you're looking for and then you can quantify it in a quasi objective way with a score of one to five. So you start low and you go slow. The same will be true for old, old people who may have GI upset problems, for people who have Crohn's disease uh, or other GI inflammatory diseases, start low and go slow. By going slow, double your dose throughout a period of a week, okay? And same thing probably follows through with your pets as well, correct? Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, a horse uh, doesn't need a whole lot more than a human, for example. Doesn't. And the dog doesn't need as much as a human. But you experiment and you find out. And I can't recommend dosages other than what I do for my dumb dog, which is five sprays every couple of hours on days when it's cloudy. Gotcha. All right. And now let me ask this in the manufacturing. I know that there's only so much you can say here, but uh, where are our products manufactured? In all other words, are they made in China? Nope. All made in the U.S. And all right here in the great so they actually sourced out to the best place. Yeah. Yeah, we, we have changed suppliers and we're always open to continue to change suppliers in the same way that we're open to improving our products. Again, the adage at M is there is nothing constant but progress. So That's things will change. Uh, people who are suppliers will change. In green, so how, are, in quality, how are our products monitored for quality? Oh, they go through a very, very strict quantity, uh, quality uh, product examination so that for every batch, for example, I get what is called a COA, a certificate of analysis. And it will tell me all of the heavy metals that have been tested for and the limits of them. And we use the California proposition, uh, which is the strictest 64, which is the strictest one in the world as the guidelines for uh, heavy metals. And in terms of every potential uh, problem with an infection, we plate out all of the materials and we state, we state the lack of any of the things such as E. coli, salmonella, listeria monocytogenase, many of these bacterial infections that are common with uh, food poisoning and come about through improper food preparation. That's good. You know, I'm, I'm always glad that we're really trying to regulate the heavy metals um, and, and the rap also. Um, yeah. Country music is okay, but uh, heavy metal just doesn't 
you know, I'm not big into heavy metal, so I'm glad we're regulating that. That's good. Yeah. We get we get a detailed batch for every order that we make, and anybody who wants to see that can see it. It's not anything that is hidden. Just let me know, and I'll send it to you. Great. All right. Well, I know we're running uh, out of time here. Dr. Templeman, is there anything else that uh, you want to mention before we go ahead and close? I know we've got lots of questions still being asked and things going, but we only have a certain amount of time that we can cover things. Yeah, I, I mean, my, my responsibility at M is not only for product uh, development and improvement, but also to answer questions for people who are trying to do their very best and I talked today, for example, with one of our distributors for 45 minutes about a number of the concerns that he has and some of the awful things that are happening to him in the medical system. And I will do that for anybody. Great. So if you have a question that uh, we didn't get a chance to answer on this call tonight, then be sure to address that to Dr. Templeman. You can send it to drtempleman at m.network and uh, he will try to uh, get to your question uh, as quickly as possible, and he's really good at that, I can tell you that, uh, and making sure that he gets to everybody's information. Um, if those that want to know, the recording will be up. We'll have the recording up. You can find the recordings at uh, the M Network uh, YouTube channel. Uh, you'll always find the archive there on YouTube and the M Network channel. Uh, also, uh, for the previous week's calls, you'll find those at mnetworkcalls.com and uh, certain calls like this call uh, you'll find at empower empowerplan.com uh, but uh, as far as archiving you want to be checking the youtube uh, channel for the youtube m network channel uh, on youtube because uh, there you'll find everything uh, that we've done and you'll find this call as well dr templeman thank you so much and uh, we'll look forward to what we're going to be doing next week and everyone, have a great night. Yeah, if they've got suggestions as to what they want to hear, tell them to send them to you. Absolutely. Yeah, send us your suggestions, what you want to see on this call. If there's anything else that we uh, don't get addressed during our regular calls, we want to make sure that these calls are really being addressed to you all, that it's the information you want to hear. So if there's anything more you want to hear, let us know. We want to know it so that we're answering your questions. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night.